Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are covering some introductory statistics and econometrics concepts. That is, the t-test for equal variance samples. Sometimes it is very useful to understand if the means of two samples are the same or different, accounting for some random variation that is present in many sources of real-world data. Today we are investigating quite a natural data set, that is economic growth rates in three countries, the United States, the United Kingdom and China. And it is very important in economics research or for general understanding to know whether some country is growing faster than other country or if the growth rates of two countries can be considered the same. It's a very important question to answer and statistics and hypothesis testing can assist us in just that. So we have data for US and UK economic growth rates from 1971 until 2019, so for 49 years, 49 observations. And for China, we have got observations from 1980 all the way to 2019, so 40 observations. And the question we want to answer today is, do the UK and China grow significantly faster or significantly slower than the US? And the, the equal variance t-test is perhaps the easiest tool one can use to answer this question. First of all, we need to calculate the number of observations in each of our samples. To do that, we can use the count function and apply it to the whole array of economic growth rates over the whole sample. And we see that we have got 49 observations for the United States, 49 observations for the UK, and 40 observations for China. Now, we need to apply the average function to calculate the mean growth rates in all of those three countries. And the means are what we're going to compare. On average, does a particular country grow faster than some other country? So averages are 1.82% per annum, 1.86% per annum for US and UK respectively, and a whopping 8.45% per annum for China. Is the difference of 0.04% per annum significant? Can we say that the UK is growing faster than the US, or that it has been growing faster than the US for the past 49 years? Or is this difference negligible enough so a test would not pick up any statistical significance from this? Is the difference between China and the US, which is more than 6% per annum, is that statistically significant? Can we say with certainty that China has been growing faster than the US? The t-test is a procedure that can help you make such conclusions. But to account for the natural variability of the data, here we model economic growth as random variables with some structure in the data, but with some random disturbances that are due to macroeconomic fluctuations, business cycles, or unexpected events that factor into economic growth. Well, to model it and to quantitatively represent that, there is an easy way and the calculation can be done using the standard deviation formula. And as we have got samples, not populations, we're not concerned with economic growth rates from the start of uh, written history uh, all the way until the present day, it's just a sample, we need to apply the sample standard deviation formula that is an unbiased estimator of the uh, sample standard deviation. So stdev.s, sample standard deviation. And we need to select the whole array of economic growth rates again and drag this formula around to see by how much on average an economic growth rate at a particular year deviates from the mean. And we can see that for the US and the UK, the deviations from the mean are quite comparable, 1.92% per annum and 2.12% per annum, while China growth is more volatile at 2.68% per annum. Again, here we assume that variances of the samples are equal. It's an equal variance t-test, which means that we assume that those variances are roughly the same. And how reliable is this assumption? Well, we'll address it in future videos. As for now, we just assume the variances are the same. Now, we can use uh, this formula over here to calculate the 
standard deviation for the test to use because we have got two different standard deviations and two respective variances for each of the pairs of countries. Remember, we're trying to figure out if the UK is growing faster than the US or if China is growing faster than the US. So for each of the tests we do, and we're going to do two tests, uh, compare UK with the US and China with the US, we need to calculate the test specific standard deviation estimate. And it is calculated using this formula over here. And let's just enforce this formula and translate it into the language of Excel formulas. So first of all, we need to calculate the square root of a ratio. In the numerator, we would have n1 minus 1, so sample size minus 1, times the variance of the first sample, so standard deviation squared, plus um, n2 minus 1. And here we need to lock n2, the column of n2, because it's the... Um, sample size corresponding to the US, and it stays the same for both of our tests, times the standard deviation for the US, and again we lock the column over here squared to get the variance, and that's our numerator done. So we can close the parentheses and divide it by the adjusted total sample size. That is n1 plus n2, and lock n2 again, minus 2. That is the adjusted sample size, adjusted for the degrees of freedom loss. And the degrees of freedom loss is associated with the fact that we impose constraints on our data by calculating the means. When you calculate the means, you reduce the uh, number of the degrees of freedom. So because we have two means over here, we reduce this number by two. And because we had a mean in the first sample, we subtract one here. And because we had a mean in the second sample, we also subtract one over here. That's how conceptually represents these uh, arithmetic operations. Now we can close the bracket for the first square root and adjust this test specific standard deviation by the number of observations by multiplying it by the square root of 1 over the first sample size and 1 plus 1 divided by the second sample size n2 and lock n2 as well. So now we can press enter and apply this formula and see that the adjusted for sample size and for the variances of two samples, test-specific standard deviation when we compare UK and US is 0.41 approximately. If we drag this formula over here, we'll get a test-specific standard deviation for the comparison of China with the US. And we can see that this is quite a lot higher because this standard deviation is obviously higher than this. Now we can convert our differences between the means and our test-specific standard deviation to the t-stat. A t-stat will represent how far the difference deviates from zero, adjusted for some random variability that is inherent to random variables we investigate. So here we can calculate the difference between the means, so mean one minus mean two, and we lock mean two, as US stays there for both of the tests, divided by the test-specific standard deviation we have just calculated. And we can enforce this formula and drag it across. And we see that the t-stat for the comparison of China with the US is a whopping 13 and a half, while the t-stat for the comparison of the UK and the US is not much different from zero. A rule of thumb is that if the magnitude of a t-stat is higher than two, then the effect is statistically significant. But to uh, rigorously apply hypothesis testing, we need to calculate the number of the degrees of freedom and uh, apply the uh, t-test, the t-distribution, student's t-distribution, to figure out the p-value, that is, the probability that such a difference would occur due to random chance alone. And the lower our p-value would be, the more certain can we be that the effect is indeed there, that it is statistically significant, that the difference between the economic growth rates is there, and that one country is growing faster than the other. So here, in the equal variance, t says the degrees of freedom calculation is pretty simple. We just need to add both sample sizes, again locking the one for the US, and subtracting two, compensated for the degrees of freedom loss, as we have imposed the mean onto both samples. Now we can enforce this formula and drag it for the comparison with China as well, and see that the degrees of freedom for a comparison of China and the US is lower because we have some missing observations for the economic growth of China. And now we can finally apply the two-tailed t-distribution. So t-dist two-tailed, as our x we apply the absolute value 
of our t-stat. t-stat can be either positive or negative, but we are concerned with whether there is any difference in any direction. So we just type in the absolute value of the t-stat and consider the two-tailed distribution and the number of the degrees of freedom we have just calculated. And we close the parentheses and enforce the formula and drag it across. And we see two very different p-values over here. The p-value for the comparison of the UK and the US economic growth is very close to 1. It means that the probability that such a difference, a minuscule difference of 0.04% per annum, occurred due to random chance, due to variability in economic growth, due to random factors, is 92.74%. It means that it's very unlikely that there is something robust we can pick up from the difference. While the p-value for the comparison of China and the US is very small, it's almost 0%. If you increase the number of decimals, you will see that at some point you might approach a number. So here we can see that so it's zero point, a lot of zeros, three zero eight two percent. So it is very very unlikely that such a difference between eight point forty five percent and one point eighty two percent occurred randomly. It means there is some systematic difference that the equal variance t test was able to pick up, and this test can be applied to comparing means of multiple samples in pretty much any area of business, finance, economics, or statistics. This test you can see everywhere, so it's very important and very useful to understand how to apply it and what are its assumptions. Its assumptions are that the two samples are independent, so economic growth rates in countries are independent of each other, again quite a questionable assumption that we'll address in further videos, and as is from the name equal variance t-test, it assumes that those standard deviations and the corresponding variances are the same, which is also questionable, especially in that case, when this standard deviation is quite a lot higher than the one for the US. But if you believe that these assumptions are true, then that is the output. We can reasonably assume that the economic growth rates in the US and the UK are the same, they are growing at an equal rate throughout the 49 years in question, while for China it is very unlikely that such a massive difference occurred due to random chance, so probably and very certainly it is a systematic difference, a statistically significant difference between economic growth in China and economic growth in the US. And in the further videos we'll discuss further extensions of the t-test and how to deal with the assumptions that can be not satisfied in your data sets. As for now, please leave a like under this video if, if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.